Welcome everybody. Um, in this video what we're going to talk about is the overlays as part of the PE file format and what I'm hoping to cover here is, is just really a brief introduction so that you have a, a high level understanding of what they are, how to detect them, and you know how they might be used particularly by malware authors. Um, this is by no means meant to be an extensive discussion about them. We're not really going to get into the details as to how tools parse them. There are a number of scenarios that I've encountered, and, and I'm sure for those of you that are familiar with overlays, um, where you've encountered them as well. Um, so again, the focus here is just to get a, a brief introduction, a basic understanding, and hopefully make a video for once that isn't, that isn't you know, 30, 45 minutes long. So with that, let's jump right in. Um, I have two files here opened in my hex editor, hxd. You'll see sample.exe and then overlay.bin. And the files themselves aren't, I guess, terribly relevant other than one, of course, contains an overlay, the other one doesn't. So what is an overlay? Well, uh, simply put, an overlay is just data that is appended to the end of a PE file. So if we look at our sample file and we scroll down to the end, you'll see that, you know, at least in, in my experience, Oftentimes these files end with data that's contained in one of the last seg uh, sections and then just a series of null bytes. Now with our overlay, and I cheated a little bit in that I already looked up where the overlay is located, um, and we'll get to that in just a moment, but what you're seeing here is the end of the PE file, one of the, well, the last segment, um, some null bytes, and then this um, appended data just directly to the end of the PE file. Now, why, why do we have overlays? Well, overlays can be used for a number of reasons. I believe they're used for certificates now. Um, as you can see here, there is some RAR, uh, well, indications that there's a RAR file, an archive file that's appended to the end of this file. Um, the data that can be appended here is, is arbitrary. And that's why I say it's kind of hard to say what all of the different uses as you'll find. In fact, I came across a malicious sample just the other day that had essentially appended a bunch of shell code into the end of the into this overlay, and then it was staged in memory. The execution jumped to that shell code in the overlay to basically fix the import table, and then it passed execution to the proper entry point, and then the program was able to run after being ejected into memory. Um, here you can see we have an example of, of, of an archive, and we'll be able to extract this archive and really look at what that archive contains. Um, some things to really, like uh, important points to understand with these overlays is while the data may be arbitrary, this content isn't going to be mapped into memory during runtime. So when we you know, ask the operating system to run an executable loaded into memory, it's not mapping the overlay into memory. And so if it wasn't, you know, that in the example that I just provided, if it wasn't staged in memory in its entirety and whatever was loading it knew how to not only include the overlay, but then go and execute code there or utilize it as a resource, then it's going to likely have to obtain um, a file pointer to, you know, the original image on disk, then navigate to that overlay section and access the data there. So if we were to run this executable in memory, we'd see all of the segments mapped in and it would stop here at the end of the PE file and we wouldn't see that overlay there. So how can we detect overlays? Well, a couple of tools. Um, both of these are ones that I regularly talk about, but Detected Easy here has been the focus of the last couple of videos. Um, you'll see we've dropped the file in. We have our information here. A couple of things are, are going on. Not only do we have our overlay but then it's also identifies that overlay data as potentially a RAR archive. Um, for our signatures then, this is actually a file that is a self-extracting WinRAR archive. And that's what that signature indicates there at the top of the, um, the signature block. So what we have happening here is that when this executable runs, um, it extracts that overlay um, using RAR, WinRAR, and then you know, knows how to execute the content inside of that. So what we have here then is a self-extracting, self-executing WinRAR executable. Um, so it is a valid PE file, and you can see that the resources that are being executed now likely are contained in that archive in that overlay. So we can dig a little bit deeper as to that content. Um, some other ways in which we can see that, we have our memory map. You can see there's the overlay. Uh, you'll notice that we have the offset 
And then these are our virtual addresses. So a virtual address is not provided. Um, just another sort of indication that this is not typically mapped into memory, uh, at least not by the operating system proper. Uh, again, if there is something else that's loading the file, it might understand that it has data in that overlay section or segment that it wants to utilize, and it might load it in an entirety there. Um, we have, we'll come back to this window in a second. Uh, we also have with the latest version, at least as of the time of this recording, we have a button for overlay. So that'll take us here as soon as it loads um, directly to that overlay section, show us the content, and you can see much like we saw in the hex editor there. Okay, other tools that are available. Uh, of course, there's the venerable PE Studio, and you can see PE Studio also identifies not only that there is an overlay, but then also, much like we saw with Detected Easy, it's identified the content in that overlay and given us an indication that it's a RAR file. In addition, we have information such as the file offset, uh, entropy calculations, of course, the signature, um, the first few bytes, the first few hex. So it's the file offset, just like we saw with Detected Easy. Go back to the memory map. File offset, okay, and these offsets are going to be the raw offsets into the file. And so PE files have, uh, and I've discussed this in a previous video, so if you're not real familiar with the PE file, I have a couple of live sessions where I've gone into the details here. Um, but essentially what we have for the sections is we have the raw offset, that's the where the section is going to be located while it's on disk. So it's really a raw offset and bytes from the beginning of the file. And then we have the virtual addresses. So these are the virtual addresses where the different segments will be loaded into memory once it's been executed. Um, so here we have a, a raw offset 4400. Again, really doesn't need that virtual address. And if we go back to the hex editor, you can see 4400. So that's how I was able to navigate to that section. Um, one last way is uh, I was looking through, in order to create this demo, I was looking through and, and just downloading random executables from uh, the URL house or from the Malware Bazaar. And because I don't know which one of those has an overlay and I couldn't find a way to just offhand filter for those during the searching, um, I went ahead, downloaded you know a couple dozen and then created this relatively straightforward um, uh, Yara signature that just basically says, if it has an overlay whose size is greater than zero. If you look at the latest documentation for Yara, it has two values, the offset and the size, much like you saw with our tools. Um, and it just says that if either of these is defined, it'll have an, uh, you know, a non-zero value essentially. So this certainly works as a way um, to detect those. And as you can see here, I've got Yara installed on Windows, which is kind of scary, but it works. And I forgot that when I downloaded the executables, it's not just Yara, it's yara64.exe. Uh, let's clear that screen, get rid of that ugly red text. And there you can see there's the match. And if we go to the other sample, um, there is no match. So that's just, a, you know, again, a, another way of recognizing those overlays. And this might be something that, you know, if you were looking at maybe scanning executables in larger volume or tagging them as you're, you know, ingesting them into to an artifact collection framework or, or pipeline, this could be something that could possibly help you with that. Now, um, what about extraction? Well, we could really just go into the hex editor and uh, select the bytes that we want and dump those. But we can also, I'm going to try to close all these windows here just so it's not quite so crowded. Um, we can also go to, okay, we're in the memory map. Uh, we can just say dump all. I think this is a pretty easy way. Uh, I've created a folder already called called dump. So we'll select that. That will dump all of the sections here. Um, so we really don't need all of them, but uh, I didn't find a way in the two seconds I tried to um, get just this section I want. And there it is. So now we can drop that into our hex editor. You can see here's just the bytes now for that particular file, for that particular overlay and the data there and the fact that we think it's a, uh, a WinRAR. So let's try to extract it. I have 7-zip installed, so nice and easy. Just right click on the file, extract here. And there we go, we did get the extraction. So we have a bat file, uh, a VB, encoded VB script. I don't think I've ever actually come across one of those, believe it or not. Um, and then our uh, comsvc.exe. And if you were to upload this artifact, 
the COM SVC XE. In fact, if you were to upload the self-extracting WinRAR arc, you know, executable that we just dealt with, because as you saw, um, we could clearly see that executable file, you'll, it'll be recognized as DC RAT. So there is, um, but that's not gonna always be the case. And so being able to extract this, you know, just helps us to get to that next stage a little bit quicker. Although I imagine there's obfuscation and stuff. I haven't, uh, just, I didn't bother to peek into any of these files. Um, so that was just, again, brief introduction onto overlays. There's, I'm sure, dozens and dozens and dozens of different routes we can go down with them. But hopefully by the end of this video, you have a good understanding of what they are, how to identify them, and the fact that they can contain any amount of data, any type of data, and that they're not going to be loaded into memory, at least not by the operating system. So if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, things I missed or, or maybe even misrepresented, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I always appreciate that. And I will see you all in the next video.